Jam. Oh, hallelujah. And you can go anywhere at a moment. We need to be cemented people that we don't have to take three days. So we, we were going to pack a suitcase, remember? We haven't back, got it packed yet. <laughs> I thought I might just wear one dress and wear it for three days. The only problem is people will be looking. She's got the same dress. What a focus. <laughs> don't focus on these things. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I can tell when people come in the room. You know, and everybody turns. Somebody drops up, everybody turns. Brother Evelyn got a bug in his glass of water one day and everybody saw it go in. <laughs> he never got it out while he's preaching. He drank the bug and all. Yeah. <laughs> you want to go to the mission field? Hallelujah. This happened more than one time. Amen. I could tell some stories, but we're in a mixed company. Yeah. Horrible stories. You got to have a horror show in your life sometimes to see the beauty of what God can do. And he doesn't want some of these things to happen. And people say God wouldn't do that. Oh, no, let me take you over in the Old Testament and read to you where he said, I'm going to do this and this and this and this to the Israelites if you're going to be faithful to me. But you're not. And so this is what I'm going to do. And then he gives a list of horrible things. Oh, my goodness. I'm glad I wasn't around. Horrible things. He said, but this is what I'll do to you because you won't obey me. And that's for the Gentiles. It's for everybody. Everybody reads it. God will do the good thing. Amen. So God is waiting for us to get out of our comfort zone. We need to write this word down. Now listen, we don't want to wait wait a week. Write it down. And everybody, anybody want a copy of this word? Yes. If you don't, I'm going to pray for you. I'm telling you. There's ends and pieces in last week's too. And read it. Get busy for the Lord. Amen. You can stay busy with your neighbors. I can stay busy with my neighbors. I had somebody to walk in this room one day and here's a prophetic word. They come walking in the door. There's somebody your neighbors are driving you crazy. I'm like, oh, that's me. And I jumped up and I went, it's me, it's me. And she came over and began to prophesy. With Judy Brown, the Lord saith unto thee, you're not moving out of that neighborhood. And these people are not either. You're going to get them saved. And you're not moving out of the neighborhood until they all change. We want gated communities. We want to live in nice places. Don't anybody get mad at me. I'm just telling you. I'm talking. Yeah. Yes, we do. I left a, a $550,000 home and let somebody else live in it. And it's been flooded three times. All the antique furniture, everything. Been restored, renewed. After a while, they'll stop taking care of it. You're going forward for it. You're leaving behind the old for the new. How many want the new? Yes. You want the new? Yes. Oh, come on. Yes. You want the new? Yes. Some of you ought to be down deep in the floor. I want the new. I want the God. I want the new. I got to have the new. If you don't give me the new, I'm going to die. I'm telling you, Lord, I'm going to die. I'm going to die if you don't give me the new. I'm telling you, if you don't give me the new, I'm going to die. I won't make it. Australian came into our service and I'd never seen anything like him. He was like a kangaroo standing on top of the podium. <laughs> then he's in the pastor's lap hugging him around the neck. He said, it's wonderful, Molly. Molly, you just can't imagine. That man had been under fire and the persecution. He had 89 churches that were going to take all his churches because they didn't like him. Scattered his name all the United States. This Ruth ran to rescue him. I'm telling you, honey, deep is calling unto deep. The deep is calling us unto things that we haven't understood about revival. We say we want a revival. That means you're in love with Jesus all the time, whether it's good, bad, or ugly. Yes. Whether you have no money or whether you have money, you're a happy camper. <laughs> then wait till he blesses you and you can't tell anybody because they're not ready yet. Pastor Heflin said to me one day, yeah, you want to be a testimony of what God's talking about? If you're not, say, Lord, do some more trimming. 
so I can be a pillar of this thing. He comes to me one day. He said, I'm going to ordain some men. He said, but they're not ready yet. But you are. That's what he said to me. Would you be willing? Well, I didn't know it anyway if he hadn't told me. I wouldn't know that I was ready. But he, evidently, he was being honest with the Lord and me. He said, would you be willing to wait until they grow up? He didn't say use that word exactly. I said, well, I guess I, ordination is not for you being a spiritual honey. It's for character. Remember that. It's for character. It's for, it's for being like Christ. Workers' papers and license are to preach. It's a formality in the church. And he said, would, would you be willing to wait? I said, sure, I'll be willing. In fact, you can ordain me last. Line them up. Did you know there was one in there? One. That never liked me from the beginning and doesn't like me to this day. And he made things bad for me all the time. He used to pour coffee on top of my car. I rented a car and he poured coffee all over the top of it. He'd hide my tools. And if things were happening, it's Sister Carneal's fault. I was going to change my name. I'm telling you, God wants to make you the head and not the tail. He wants to show you the power and the operation of it. I was telling him earlier, I had a visitation from the Lord this morning. And he said... It was going, it's going to be late. It'll be early fall here or our winter, but it'll be like fall to most people. But it'll be winter to the people in the snow areas. It's going to move by his spirit. That's going to be a season. He's going to move by his spirit. Because I kept hearing the words to a song, the snowflakes are falling. That's all I heard of the song. The snowflakes are falling. And when I got my book, before I got my book last year, I heard these words in March, Christmas in July. And I said to D, something's going to happen in July. Now, I would like for the Lord to say, in July, I'm going to do this. Wouldn't it be easier? Come on. Wouldn't it be easier if you told a child, if you do this, this is what's going to happen to you. They don't listen anyway, but anyway. So in July is when, it, I didn't even know the book was going to get printed. He had already printed the book, brought the book here. And I'm told it's going to be six months down the road, but we're going to give it. Uh, then they said, oh, your books arrived today. Well, that was the day the meeting started. And we've got some of them here. Well, I mean, when he put me in front of all these cameras, he just said, just talk. I didn't know he was taking everything off of my talk for the book. And he's paying all the money for it. I got the money, honey. You got the time? <laughs> so I'm saying to you, this, this man did not like me, and he made things terrible. And Brother Heffer used to do things to kind of pacify him because he could see in the spirit, and he would work faith. He would take us into the office and correct us or dress us down. He would he would always say to me when I, because I was in charge of interviewing the people, and whether they could stay at camp or not. And, and he told me how much time I had, and I, I'd say, well, I think you need to, this one is not ready for this place. Well, let's give him another month or another month. I thought, oh, Brother Heaven is plucking my last bird. And he said to me one day, he said, well, just say yes to what I asked you. And uh, you can do it. I said, I, I don't know. I said, I don't, my spirit is not like yours. I, I don't move the way you do. So finally I said to him, all right, I'll take on a little more territory. And he, here's what he said to me. I'm telling you, some of you are afraid of the dark. That's where things get developed. He said, Good. Now I'll hate you and not me. He wanted me to be a leader. He said, I want you to be a leader. I'm going to give you more things to take care of and decide upon. And I used to, listen, you don't know, I used to go to my room and cry and lay on my face. I'm not talking about it for a day or a moment. A lady comes in and begins to prophesy. There's somebody you live in the third building on the end room and you cry every night before you go to bed. I thought, I'm not putting my hand it. <laughs> She said it three times. She said, there's somebody in this room. You cry every night. Well, everybody knew I lived on the end. But I didn't put my hand up. I thought, I'm going to get through this. Yep. So I did. I got all the way to Arizona with it. Yeah. Is God going to be your God? Yes. Yeah. Is he going to be your God? Yes. Regardless of what happens. Yes. Regardless. Yes. Hallelujah. Ruth said to Naomi. Your God shall be my God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And wherever thou goest, I'll go. Your people will be my people. Hallelujah. 
She didn't know she was going to be the grand, what, great grandmother of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. You need to be on the horse riding. Hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. You got to understand the ways of the Lord that are high. Because he's high and lifted up in your spirit. He's higher than, he's high in everything. And nothing is so precious that you won't let him use it or have it. Glory to God. I want everybody that wants this anointing, and I mean, if you come up here and stand, you better be ready for the results, for the change. You better be ready to do whatever God wants to do and let him do it. I was the most unlikely one. How many of you are the only one unlikely one in your family? I'm going to tell you. I felt I was the most unlikely one. I'm serious. Everybody else had the brains and the money, and I got the short end of the stick. But I felt one day it was going to come to me. I didn't know how. But I thought, what? and then I thought Jesus didn't love me that much. Really, everybody, I have a lot of millionaires in my family, and they didn't offer me any money. Very little. I want to tell you, I lived as a missionary, and I don't remember but one time somebody brought me, or maybe twice, a dress that they didn't want. That, that love was not there. They could have bought me a nice wardrobe. But I had an angel to visit me recently in the last 10 days. At first I thought it was, a, and I, it was just a, I, did, I thought it was a, just an object and all of a sudden the head began to move and the eyes began to move and the mouth began to move and it was an angel. A blonde headed angel and a white <laughs> one. Neither one of you. <laughs> and it began, but it began to move, it, it looked like an immovable unmove, object, and I thought, what is this thing coming along? And I heard these words. For the Lord has allowed all that has happened to you. When others got it, you didn't get it. I'm paraphrasing. When others had it and didn't help you, I caused it not to be. Because I wanted to do it my way. I wanted to show you the life of faith. But I heard that voice. Oh, honey, it was like sweetness, the nectar of a love relationship that is still there, no matter if it's death or life. As you know, there's a scripture that said, even the dead have hope. Anybody read that? Even the dead have faith. Because they died in faith. But that angel kept talking. All that's happened in your life, I love it. Now, he didn't put it there, but you just happened to walk in harm's way and things happen. And and none of you have ever said, Lord, is this necessary? Now, be honest. Anybody ever said that to the Lord, is this necessary? Yeah. I've only said it a couple of times, and that was too, too many. But I told the Lord I was bored once. <laughs> I advise you never say that to the Lord. I'm serious. I told the Lord I was bored one day, and I needed to change. I'm in my little apartment in camp, and he said, Arizona? Just like that. In two minutes, I get a call on the phone, will you come to Arizona? By way of North Dakota. Jesus. By way of a kidney attack. These are precious memories. I don't know why they happen. Maybe one day he'll tell me why I had to do this suffering. But a word came last week, and the Lord said, in your suffering, you are birthing, birthing, yes. birthing. I thought, boy, I'm most a birth nation. Come on, you better claim something here. If you've been through some birthing, you're birthing something. Anybody listening to me? Yeah. Something. Cheryl's got a house, and her son one day put a candle they thought was out in the trash can to burn the house down. And out of the fire, mm. you cannot imagine what the Lord has done for her. Insurance claims and blessings and help and professional people didn't charge. And her house is remade. I won't even try to define what she's done. Now I want those that you really, truly, if you don't, if you come here 
and change your mind and renege on God. You can't do that. And I'm going to have the Samuel sons. How do you like that name? These are two Samuels to pray for you, lay hands on you. I want to lay hands on you. Where's your husband? Where did he disappear to? Where's your wish, brother? Where'd he go? He's outside. Well, tell him he needs to come inside. He's walking his dogs. Well, they can come too. Hallelujah. We're just going to lay hands. There's something about laying on of hands. He says, call for the elders. He's talking about people that have suffered a little bit. Been through some things. I'm, I'm telling you today, we've had a word here. And I don't believe, I may be wrong, but I, I, it may have been, this word may have been shouted in a couple of other places in the whole United States. But we put ourselves in a place to hear what God wants. There's people in this room, we won't call their names. They're in tragedies right now. You know who you are. Their life is between heaven and earth, believing God to work miracles. Miracles. Great miracles. You understand? They need miracles. And they're believing God by coming here. That God's going to work the miracles. Well, the dogs need to be sanctified too. Here they come. <laughs> That's Coco and who? This is Coco, Black and White, and Cuddles. Cuddles. We were on our prayer line for four hours and 15 minutes last night in the hotel at Embassy Suites. Well, we're getting ready to lay hands on people right now. So, okay. but they were quiet. What's amazing, I just want to mention. Yes. They were there. Well, we did a prayer line, four hours and 15 minutes, and didn't say a word. Amen. Because they are led by the Spirit. Okay, I want you to come up here. Where you go, what church you go, they're always very quiet. You are asking what? I want you to come up and help the Samuelsons pray. We're going to line people up. This is for their holy calling, their dedication, their commitment. The sanctuary. Now, we can't bring the dogs up here. We're going to leave them. Everybody come, just come holy and quietly, okay? I didn't come out here looking for a nice home or rest. I come out here at the word of the Lord. I didn't look back. I had never called my family and said, I'm out here. When are you going to come and say me? It doesn't work like that. You got another family out here. So another family's going to be taken care of. I want you to tell me what you, I want you to tell them what you just told me. If you want hands laid on you, it's an impartation. Impartation, you don't get people's ministry by impartation. It's work and labor. But you get impart, uh, impartation of the revelations, of the mysteries of God and what he's doing. But when you stand here and receive it, God expects us to do our part. He's going to do his part. You know, earlier, um, Bruce saw the sword of the Lord coming in and out of here. And then as Michelle prophesied, he felt the weightiness of the glory. He felt the wooing on your heart. A father drawing. We need to examine ourselves. Because it's just like, the, the richest docks that awaited us in my presence is ready to flow. Will you let me flow in your life? Will you let me remove all the strife? Will you let me bring you into that place, my inner chambers, where I long to fellowship and walk with you? 
and let me flow all the way through and resurrect everything and everyone around you. It is my good pleasure for my anointing to come and woo and bring you and draw you deep, deep, deep into all that I have for you. This is the time of the outpouring of my goodness and for you to shine and set aside the things of yesterday because you're brand new. So let me move in the midst of you. Let me take all your cares. Let me take and take care of you. For I know how to increase the heavenly flow. That you lack nothing. If you want trust and learn to lean your whole heart on all that I have for you, you will see a brand new release of my anointing to carry you. So examine your heart. Because I have a brand new start to pick you up from right where you're at and teach you to hear my voice in everything you do. And then you'll be able to follow through in all those desires I place within you and fulfill your call and stand tall and learn to live in a place where you never fall, but you remain steadfast in my grace. And then I can pick up your pain, the pace, and what I want to do with each of you. So let go. So the heavenly flow can come and you can ride with me. And others will see and say, I want that. I know that's not them, that's God. Picking them up. I want that that you have. I want to provoke them to jealousy. I want to provoke them to the place where they can clearly see. So let it be where you simply yield to walk with me. This is the spirit of grace. saying as you enter into 2022 do not bring the hurts of your past into 2022 because he has the new wine and the new oil and his glory but it can't be mixed with your hurts so as you give the hurts even from a child to the Lord the hidden hurts and say, Lord, I repent. I want you to say this now. Lord, I repent for stuffing too many hurts in my heart, even from a child. This day, I give you all of my hurts, all of my pain, all of my disappointments. It's finished. You finished it at the cross. I don't have to carry it anymore. I give you my tears and put your hand on your heart. And now I receive healing in my heart. I receive healing in my mind. I receive healing in my soul. I receive healing in my spirit. I receive healing in every area. I receive the new wine, the new oil. And I declare 2022 the year of breakthrough and blessings in every area of my life. Thank you, Lord. I am free. Who the sun sets free is free indeed. 